If you Google how to apply makeup, you will often see a number of complicated steps which are not always necessary. This can be confusing. You might not even know what brush to use. I recently finished an up-level course at a makeup academy. The course I attended was taught by one of the top makeup artists in South Korea. I was fascinated to learn that the use of small amount of the product can actually make a huge difference. This is the opposite of what people post on TikTok. After finishing the course, I realized that instead of recommending products, it would be more helpful for you guys to really grasp the basic of makeup application. So today I'm going to walk you guys through the most basic makeup routine for beginners from skincare to makeup and how to apply this properly. If you are totally new to makeup, I would recommend first watching my video about tips for beginners and having a healthy mindset, something that I think is incredibly important. This video is kindly sponsored by Isentry. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting with skincare, I'd like to point out that there's a difference between skincare you do prior to putting makeup versus before you go to bed. They serve different purposes. The reason why people use skincare products before applying makeup is to prevent dry skin, otherwise foundation, concealer, and other base makeup products would make your skin drier as they absorb your skin moisture. So we have to make sure that we have to prepare our skin really well with a good skincare. And the first step is toner. If you want to gently refresh your skin without stripping off natural moisture, I'd like to recommend using a toner. This will help smooth your skin and give you a good base for applying other skincare products. The product I'm going to use is Isn't Trees Hyaluronic Acid Toner, and it contains five different hyaluronic acids, so it instantly gives you that moisture to your skin. First, soak a cotton pad with the toner, making sure you have covered the whole area because whipping your skin with a dry pad will cause irritation, which you want to avoid. Starting from the top of your face, wipe your skin from the middle of your face to the edge, and then use a tapping motion across your face to allow it to absorb it properly. Next, I'm going to use a serum. But I would say that this step is for someone with super dry skin. You can use any serum that gives you enough hydration. Personally, I like using one with thick consistency, which gives instant hydration but isn't oily. The product I'm using is San Rose Pose Hialu B5 Serum that's based on hyaluronic acid and also panthenol that provides great hydration as well as strengthen your skin barrier. Put a few drops onto your cheek first and wherever you feel the most dry. After it has been absorbed properly, it is time to apply moisturizer. During the makeup course I took, my instructor who has been doing makeup for over like 20 years said that the key to prepping our skin for foundation is achieving balance between dryness and oiliness. So every class, it was necessary to check our skin with the back of our hands like this to make sure that our skin is well prepared after skincare before applying foundation. If your skin is well prepared with good skincare, you don't need to use a primer because it is already good on canvas. The moisturizer I'm going to use is Crepe Beauties also simple water cream. This is just a simple moisturizer and absorbs into your skin quickly. In terms of application, when people apply a moisturizer, they tend to move the product to the outer side of the face, preventing the middle from receiving full application. So after you apply a moisturizer to your face, you should tap it gently before removing the product to the outer part of your face. This will help you to apply the moisturizer evenly. The last skincare element of this routine is sunscreen. This step is vital to protect your skin from sun damage. Even if your foundation has SPF, it is not enough to fully protect your skin. And also, choosing the right sunscreen is important. You don't want that leaves white casts or makes your skin dry. The sunscreen I'm going to use is Hyaluronic Acid's Watery Sun Gel from Isentry. It is a chemical sunscreen with no white casts. It is not greasy or sticky. The consistency is very thin and gel-like. 
so it spreads easily and does not have a stiff texture. It is cruelty free and does not contain any animal derived ingredients, which is always a plus. If you're using multiple layers for enough protection, make sure you apply them one at a time and leave enough time for absorption between each layer. The product is available on Amazon, so if you are interested in trying it, you could check on that too. Now our skin is well prepared with a good skincare, and now it's time to move on to makeup. First step is foundation. For this step, it is very important to choose the right brush. If the product is quite runny and liquid, it is better to use a flat foundation brush. But if the product has a thick consistency with high coverage, it is better to use something denser, like a buffing brush. You should aim to apply the foundation evenly across the face to make sure that the makeup looks natural and not cakey or heavy. The product I'd like to recommend for makeup beginners is liquid foundation with light to medium coverage. This will allow you to build up the coverage before moving something higher. If you have acne or hyperpigmentation, you could cover with a concealer after. If you have a makeup sponge, it is good to dampen it first and then tap your face gently in order to have the foundation set. Next, we are moving on to concealer. If you have acne, hyperpigmentation, I'd like to recommend covering it with a concealer, not foundation. Because concealer is used for covering small spots and you can direct it to specific problem areas. Whereas foundation is better for evening up your skin tone and is not as effective as hiding spots as it has less coverage. If you want to know more about how to cover acne or hyperpigmentation with the concealer in detail, I already made a video about it, so please check it out. So now we are moving on to powder. For powder, I'd like to recommend using a pressed powder because you can adjust the amount you want to use easily and not waste the product. And also, this stops you from getting unwanted powder everywhere. Again, the size of the brush matters. If it's too big and applied roughly, then you won't get a full coverage. You should therefore use a small brush and apply to the area you want to mattify, such around the eyes, the nose, and the T-zone. Next, I will move on to eyeshadow. Instead of using a shade that is deeper than your skin tone, you should build up the depths of the eyeshadow slowly to get a more natural look. To apply the color evenly on the brush, you should place it onto the eyeshadow evenly by turning it 360 degrees. Then tap the brush to make sure it is not overly pigmented. Next, simply apply the product onto your eyelids in order to achieve a natural eye makeup look. If you want to add more depth on your look, you could take the darker shade from the eyeshadow palette and apply up to the point where it shows when you open your eyes. Now we are moving on to eyeliner. If you are makeup beginners, I would highly recommend using a pencil type because it's easy to draw and you can remove easily when you make a mistake. To make a wing, you can either use the thin edge of an eyeshadow brush or a Q-tip to clean the edge. To make eyeliner last longer, look bolder and more pigmented. You can apply a pen eyeliner over. Next step is mascara. For mascara, I think we oftentimes put too much product on our lashes, making them look unnatural and clumpy. One way I combat this is by taking a piece of paper towel and removing excess product from the mascara brush. And then you could get a just right amount of product on the brush that allows you to get more defined lash look rather than spidery lash look. Let's move on to blush. For blush, I'm going to use the powder one because it's easy to use first and then it does not leave any harsh lines so that it will make a natural look easier than using a cream one that is hard to control amount you want to use sometimes. 
To apply the blush, I personally like using this small to medium sized brush. This is allowed to make the blush look more sophisticated. To prevent it, what I would like to recommend is place the brush onto the blush evenly by turning it 360 degrees, as like we did for the eyeshadow. Tap it and then slowly blend the brush onto your cheek and then connect it to whole cheek along the temple. Let's move on to contour. I'm going to use contour powder that mimics to the shadow so it will create the most natural looking shadow onto my face. I found that contour palette or powder from Asia or South Korea tend to have more like ashy shadow color whereas western brands tend to have more bronzy colors so I personally like using like South Korea beauty brands contour palette so I'm going to use this ashy one. To contour correctly, I will start by applying from the temple or along with the hairlines and then slowly bring it forward. Blending is key and please make sure that you don't put a lot of amount of products on the brush for a natural look. For lipstick, I don't have any like special tricks or tips for application but I think choosing the right color is a key for a natural look. I would highly recommend choosing something pink, neutral pink or something that mimics to your natural lip color. You could apply it directly onto the lips, apply not fully but leave out of part your lips empty and then blend with fingers. So these are all about how to apply makeup properly step by step for beginners. I'd like to point out that you don't have to follow all these steps because I included in the video. It's more about finding what you want or what you feel you need for proper makeup application. Everyone has different makeup preference so you might skip blush, contour, or even mascara so you can just everything you want but take benefit from this video just for your needs. I know this routine might sound too complicated but once you decide that you are going to master one step one month or one week it might make this routine much easier and please let me know what specific routine or step you want to know about more i'd like to know about them and make a video about it too thank you so much for watching i will see in the next one bye